uh, one of my biggest fear is the jellyfish because I, I'm terrified that for some reason I'd probably react to the sting or something, you know, it's, it's irrational. Um, well, I'd, say I, it's, I'd say it's not irrational in, in Australia. We do have some, some rather scary ones, um, like the box jellyfish and the irukandji. So they, you're unlikely to come across them, but they can be dangerous. Um, and we also get, um, blue bottles here, which they're also called, uh, Portuguese man of war. And they're actually not a jellyfish. They're, um, they're a hydrozoan, which is slightly different, but, but they, you know, to look at them, they look a lot like a jellyfish, but they can give you quite a nasty sting. Um, and some people react worse to them than others. And, and also it can affect children more and, and things like that. So it's always best to be a little bit wary of jellyfish, but they're a, a very magnificent animal as well. Yeah, I find them beautiful, especially the man of war. Uh, I think uh, anybody who's listening to this podcast should actually Google man of war uh, because it's a most beautiful creature. It's got purple hues and blues and pinks and all sorts of things. Uh, Kita, do you happen to know if I were to wear a full body wetsuit, could they sting me through that? Um, well, a wetsuit will give you a lot of protection. Um I've gone snorkeling before wearing what is called a stinger suit in Australia, which is quite thin. It's not as thick as a wetsuit, but it will cover your whole body. Um, and that, that will protect you from things like blue bottle, the, the Portuguese man of war, um, and other jellies. Um, as long as you can avoid sort of direct contact with the skin, it's usually fine. Um, if you're, if you're really unlucky, um, then it's possible that, you know, a, a stray, um, tentacle could still get in, you know, in part of your suit, but you'd have to be very unlucky. So as long as, you know, most of the time, unless there's really particular conditions and there's a heck of a lot of jellyfish around, it's unlikely that you'll come across one. Um, but yeah, sometimes there are uh, conditions where there's a lot of them at once. Yeah, I've heard about that. I know that in Portugal, they, they close the beaches if there's if they even see one uh, yes. Portuguese man of war because they're so dangerous. And well, they've actually I, started seeing them in, on the East Coast, too, of Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. well I actually went out last week looking for them because um, uh, there's a few beaches near me where if, if a lot of these Portuguese man of war start washing up in large numbers, you can also find this very beautiful sea slug that feeds on them. Um, so it's known as a blue dragon. And they're a really tiny sea slug, but they look sort of blue and silver, like they have these little wings. Um, and and they wash up sometimes at the same time. So last week I was out looking for blue bottles and for these blue dragon um, sea slugs as well, but I didn't manage to find any um, of the sea slugs. I have found them uh, last year around this time of year. So I'm hoping that again, the conditions will be right and I can find some. Um, they're very tiny, like the size of your fingernail, but they're a very beautiful, very interesting animal. Um, this, this little sea slug, it feeds on the blue bottles and then it will, it will keep their stinging cells and use them itself for its own defense, um, which is just an amazing thing to do. A lot of, um, marine animals can do that if they can feed on something and take special cells from that, um, prey and then keep them functioning in their own body as a defense mechanism. It's really amazing.